Thank you. Thank you for an excellent workout. You're very welcome. Here you got your space. Yeah. Emily, put you in can you hear me? Yep. Right here, Emily. Suzanne, you're back. How was the Dominican Republic? It was good. It was warm. It was sunny. It was. Yeah, that, that <laughs> sounds like the Dominican Republic from what I've heard. And I got back at one o'clock last night. Oh my. That's and you why showed you up so, for a workout. Why you look I so showed fresh. up for a workout. I miss the workout. <laughs> yeah. We miss you too, Suzanne. That's right here. Oh, thanks, Aiden. Thanks, Ben. <laughs> All right, gang. Let's see if I can still do a workout. I'm sure you probably still can. Let's get you guys started. All right. Let's get it going. Let's do some frog pump hip ups today. We haven't done frog pump hip ups in a while. Actually, hold on. Yeah, let's do some frog pump. All right, frog pump hip ups. So you're gonna go down on your back. We're gonna go. Regular hip up position, but we're gonna go feet together. So soles of my feet are together. Uh, my heels are gonna be pretty close to my butt. And I'm gonna push my knees out and down. And at the same time, I'm gonna push my feet together. It's a really small range of motion. And then basically you're just doing a hip up. Okay, give me 15 of these, heels close to the butt. Uh, play around with push, pushing the knees out and down versus letting the knees come a little bit more close together. There's a lot of stuff going on. You're pushing your feet together. You're driving your knees out. Frog pump hip ups, 15. Yeah, that's my body. That's my body. After your frog pump hip ups, you are going to do, so we're gonna go half kneeling position. I'm just gonna rock forward and backward five times. Then we're gonna put our leg out to the side, go down, rock forward and backward five times. And then we're gonna add one more movement in. Hand goes to ear, elbow to ground, rotate up five times. So we got five forward and backward rocks in a half kneeling position. And then we got five half kneeling adductors. So just legs straight. And then we're gonna do five rotations in that. 
position where I'm going to look over my shoulder and then I look up to the ceiling. Good morning, Paulina. So five each side. And then we're going to go down on our bellies. So after you guys are done with that, we're gonna go belly down. We're gonna do our ISO holds. So you're in a belly down position. We're gonna start, uh, let's go, we'll do them backwards. So we're gonna go I, W, T, Y. Okay, so we're gonna hold each one for 15 seconds. I first, then W, then T, then Y. If you wanna do it the other way, just cause it makes it easier. Cause you remember to do it that way. That's totally fine. Just gotta get those four letters. Three, two, one, go. We're going 15 seconds. You can be looking uh, straight ahead, or you can be looking down at the ground. You can lift your feet up off the ground or keep them on the ground. Lifting your feet up will make it a lot harder. Okay, give me the next letter. So I to W or Y to T, depending on how you're doing it. You're just holding that. Think about holding your, uh, squeezing your shoulder blades back together. That's the main thing that you're focusing on, squeezing shoulder blades back together. After your W, you're gonna go to a T. Thumbs are gonna be pointing to the ceiling, squeezing shoulder blades down and back. All right, give me the last letter, whatever that is for you. Maybe it's a Y. Rest gang. All right, let me get you guys to stand up. And let's do, um, give me uh, eight lateral squats. So feet wide, butt back, trying to keep the shin vertical to the ground, knee over top of the heel. Just give me eight rock and forward and backward and i really want you to drive your hips back as much as you can so you're feeling glutes hamstrings a little stretch in the inner thigh eight each side and then let's do let's see here we got some jumps um, let's put our shoes on. We're gonna put our shoes on 15 seconds. So just here, you're gonna cross your leg. Oh shit. You cross your leg, let's try the other side. And you're gonna look like this for 15 seconds. We're just kidding. You're gonna put your shoe on for 15 seconds. Bonus points if you're wearing shoes or you're wearing socks and you can take your shoe off, put your shoe back on or take your socks off, put your socks back on. Um. Three, two, one, let's go. Just crossing the legs, sitting down as low as you can, taking that shoe off, put it back on. 15 seconds. Regardless of your age, you should always be able to stand on one leg, put your shoe on, switch sides, three, two, one, go. Unless you don't have legs, that'll be a different story. Then what are you gonna put your shoe on? Yes, your hands, maybe. Rest. Good job, gang. Self-love. Do some self-love, guys. Four minutes. Yeah. So feet together, pushing the hips back, letting the chest spine round, back up. 
We got four minutes on the clock. So we got toe touches first. Um, we're looking for two to four good toe touches. So you touch your toes two to four times, you're good. And go on to your deep squat. If you wanna try something a little different, you can go legs wide and do that same thing. So make your toe touch a little bit easier, but the mechanics are the same. So we're pushing the hips back, hips go back. Then we let head and torso round and go down. Looking for two to four good toe touches. Once you get those two to four good toe touches, go ahead and go on to your deep squat. Um, deep squat, you can do anchored. You can do, if you wanna put your heels on something, elevate the heels a little bit, go down. You know, really we're just looking for, ideally hips below knees. And we can keep torso up, that's even better. Big one is hip, hips below knees. I'm feeling pretty tight today, so I might just hang out in this position, feels good. If there's any exercises that we've given you guys to do as a rehab or prehab, this would be the time to do them. After your deep squat, you're gonna go arms overhead. You could actually stay in the deep squat position and take your arms over top of your head if you wanted to. You're gonna try something a little different. You can be in that squat position and just go arms over top of your head. You could also land your back and go arms over top of your head. You just gotta get your arms over top of your head, gang. So this is like checking the oil in your car, like checking your tire pressure. These movements that we do, getting the arms over top of your head, full range of motion through the shoulders, doing your quadruped spinal waves, moving that spine through its full range of motion for the most part. Deep squat, full range of motion at the ankles, full range of motion at the hips, full range of motion at the knees. And then our toe touch, full range of motion at the hips. After your quadruped spinal waves, we're going to do our wrist stretches. Have another 90 seconds, got plenty of time. We got three of those wrist stretches. Palms down, fingertips straight ahead. Make sure when you're doing these wrist stretches, your fingers are spread. We want a nice big base of support of those hands. After you do your palms down, fingertips away, we got palms up, the order doesn't really matter. We got palms up, fingertips towards us. Same thing, spreading the fingers. And then we got palms down, fingertips towards us. Again, the order doesn't matter. Just wanna make sure we get those three positions. This is probably my favorite one. New day today, gang. Expertly designed by our staff of program designers, which is Jamie and me. Um, if you have a foam roller, eh, actually, let's. <laughs> this exercise is already hard enough as it is. Um, if you wanna make it harder, I will show you how to make it harder, but I would highly encourage you just to do the base exercise for today because it's already pretty, pretty damn hard as it is. So base exercise is going to be a front plank body saw. So what that looks like, you're in a front plank position. I'm going to push my heels away from the wall and then pull my heels towards the wall. So this motion starts from the feet, push heels away from the wall, pull heels towards the wall. Uh, to make that harder, you would put feet on foam roller. This changes the um, mechanics a little bit because now I'm going to pull my elbows towards the wall and then push my elbows away from the wall. It's a lot harder, okay. Um, we're gonna go 
I would encourage you all just to start at the base level. No foam roller. Um, we are going to go 20 seconds. Actually, we'll go 30 seconds. We're gonna start in five seconds. Two, one, go. So you're just holding a front plank. You're taking your heels towards the wall and then pushing your heels away from the wall. Nice and slow, don't do this fast. Your shoulders, if you wanna make it a little bit harder from this position, you can take shoulders a little bit closer to hands. Rest. Okay, gang, next one. We got in and outs. You guys know what in and outs are. We did this last phase. Um, so in and outs, we're gonna start feet together. We're gonna take a little baby hop out, a little pause, and then back together. Okay. We're gonna go 30 seconds. We're gonna start you in five, three, one, Go. So in and out. 30 seconds. Pause in that out position. In that out position, sticking your butt back. Ten seconds. Three. Rest. One more set. So we're going to go back to that front plank. Uh, this time it's going to be 20 seconds. I want you guys to think of like this as saw, this body saw. If you've ever um, used like a regular saw to cut through a tree, you have to go really long, smooth strokes. So that's what I want you to think about is that when you're going uh, heels to the wall, heels away from the wall, you're making these long, slow strokes, okay? Three, two, one, go. 20 seconds, nice and smooth. Ten seconds. Five. Rest. All right, gang, back to your in and outs. We're gonna go in 10 seconds. Five, three, one, in and outs, go, 30 seconds. Nice, Paulina. Good job. 10 seconds. Five seconds. Rest. All right, gang, grab some water. We're going to go on to the next series. So, next series we have is side plank. Press outs. Jamie, let me get you to demonstrate this. So side plank press out. Um, you're gonna be in a side plank position. Remember, we have those three main side plank positions. We have a short lever. We have a modified short lever. We have a long lever. Uh, typically, when I do side planks, I'll do short lever or long lever. When I do a modified short lever, like Jamie, just for me personally, it just kind of it just feels a little weird. Um, but that doesn't mean that you can't do it, okay? So modified short lever is just bottom knee on the ground. And if I'm looking at the feet to the hips, the top leg is stacked over top of the bottom leg, okay? And then basically it's gonna be a side plank position and you're just gonna press a dumbbell away. Press a dumbbell away, press a weight plate away. You actually don't even, that dumbbell she's using, I think it's like two pounds. You don't even really need a dumbbell. Just pressing that hand away is gonna add a lot of instability. This is very similar to that plank rotation that we did in the last phase. Um, 
we're gonna do, thank you. We're gonna go 20 seconds each side. Um, glass of water, press a glass of water away. Again, you, the, the main thing with this exercise is just as the hand gets farther away from the body, your core has to work harder. Yep, straight out. Yeah, like a press, so just straight out. Okay, three, two, one, go. This should not have to be said, but you're using your top arm. Five seconds, gang. Rest, switch sides. 20 seconds, three, two, one, go. You got it, Pauline. 10 seconds. Rest. All right, gang, let me just stand up. We're gonna do front to back hops. So front to back hops. Um, there's a little seam uh, in the gym flooring. So if you can find a line on your floor, um, something to maybe jump over, that would be ideal. So front to back hops, all I'm thinking about is I'm thinking about keeping my heels off the floor and I'm just trying to get my toes right over the line, and then toes right behind the line. So a little baby hop. Landing soft, okay? Uh, don't jump onto a mat. And, and don't, yeah, don't jump onto a mat and don't jump on a mat. Because that mat's gonna move, your feet are gonna slide a little bit. Uh, we're gonna go 30 seconds. Three, two, one. Go, just hopping nice and easy, keeping the heels off the floor. Doesn't have to be too fast. Trying to land as soft as possible. Keeping the heels off the floor. Jamie's jumping over a band, that's a great idea. Gives you a little bit of uh, some external feedback. Five seconds. Rest. All right, gang, grab some water. Only one set of those. So we have plenty of time to get to the workout. All right, gang, so we got all sorts of goodies for you guys today. Burpees, squat thrusts, push-ups, rear foot elevated split squats. So we got single leg squats first. Uh, same thing that we did in the last phase. Um, you guys should be trying to make this a little bit harder. So either you're going slower on the way down, you're going through a greater range of motion. Um, those would be the two main ways that you would make this. You can add some weight so you could hold like maybe like a five pound dumbbell in, in each hand or something. Okay. Um, you can also do this without the chair. So just like what I did, so basically you're just in a single leg squat position, I'm using this leg as a counterbalance. And then I would just basically imagine that I'm going down into that chair, okay? Uh, first exercise, second exercise, we got face pulls, we got three positions. I'm gonna do this kneeling just because that's where the band is attached. You do not have to do this kneeling. Ideally, you would do this standing, or if you don't have anything to anchor your band to, you would put the band around your feet. So three position face pull basically just means that we're gonna go through three positions. Um, we're gonna to pull to chin. We're gonna to pull to about nose eye level. And we're gonna to pull to about forehead level. It does not matter if you go chin, nose, forehead, forehead, nose, chin, all chin, all nose, all forehead. You just have to do three position. Uh, you're gonna do 10 of, of each position. Uh, higher the hands are, the harder. Third exercise, RDL ISO hold. So for this one, you're gonna grab a weight. 
You're gonna do an RDL and you're gonna hold the bottom of the position for about five seconds. And then you just got back up. You hold the bottom position. Okay, so back here, about five seconds, and then drop back up. Last one, uh, lateral delt raise. So lateral delt raise, we have done this uh, before. You're gonna grab some moderately, moderate, moderately moderate dumbbells. We'll go with that. And you're just bringing the hands up to the side and then back down. Okay, we're looking for this muscle to be working. So we're gonna do um, 13 minutes. As many rounds as you get done. Don't worry about your sets. I want you to practice these exercises. Uh, we're gonna do, let's go with 10 of everything. 10 of everything. Three, two, one, go. First movement's gonna be your single leg squat. 10 of everything. For that single leg squat, we're trying to push butt back as far as we can. Remember, the more we can push our hips back, the more we're gonna work our glutes, the less we're going to feel it through our knee. Okay, so ideally, as much as possible, if you have any knee pain, we're trying to keep knee over top of heel, vertical shin. More the knee comes this way. If you have knee pain, the more that's gonna bother the knee. Don't be afraid to use that foot, the opposite foot for balance. Remember, you can't pedal fast in the canoe standing up. After you are done with that single leg squat, you're gonna go into your three position face pull. You guys can do this with a red band. You could do this um, standing. So three positions, chin level, nose level, forehead level. You Shin mentioned using the bands um, if you don't have something to anchor them to. Yeah, just do it like, do it like this. So have a seat and then band around the toes, point the toes a little bit away from you. Um, Pauline, you'll probably have to make an X. And then basically you're just pulling thumbs about uh, chin level, thumbs nose level, thumbs, forehead level. Make sure you're pointing toes away from you. Gang, for your RDL with the ISO hold, just use maybe like a 20. 20 pounds. Emily, same thing, maybe just a 20 pound dumbbell. Uh, if you guys have a hard time feeling the RDL in your hamstrings and you feel it too much in your lower back, you're gonna put your feet up on a chair to where your knees are just a little bit bent. And you're gonna do that exact same motion as far as like just holding it. So you're gonna drive up, you're gonna hold this for five seconds and then you go back down, okay? So if you have a hard time feeling the RDLs in the back of your legs, feet up on a chair, drive your hips up, push your heels down, back of the legs, five second hold, 10 times. Mm -hmm. 
if the RD, if you're feeling that RDL in your lower back, that is not what we want working. I mean, it is, but not the primary muscle. So just really make sure you're pushing your hips back. Play around with how much you bend your knees. Sometimes people feel it more in their hamstrings when their legs are a little bit more uh, closer to being straight. Sometimes feel, people feel it more in the hamstrings, their knees are a little bit bent. So it really just depends on you. Feeling it, ladies? So right back here. Good. Right back here. Good. Oh, that's not. Yeah. Yeah, you might even get this. Uh, actually, that's a great point. If you're really feeling the RDL in this area, like right underneath the what would be called your gluteal fold, um, if you're feeling the RDL in that position, don't go down as low. I want you to feel this in the belly of the muscle, not at the origin. You feel at the origin, that means you're tugging too much on the tendon. So bend the knees a little bit, even consciously focus on trying to flex the hamstrings because you should feel this in the belly of the hamstring, not at the ends of the hamstring. We are going 13 minutes, as many rounds as you can get done. Did you get 10? <laughs> It's probably good. It's probably good. After your RDL to ISO holds, we're going to our lateral delt raise. So two five-pound dumbbells, two 10-pound dumbbells. You're just lifting your arms out to the side. Nice and slow for this exercise. I could use those. Nice and slow for this exercise. I want that muscle to be working. We're trying to feel this in the outside of the shoulder. You can play around with um, bent elbow versus a locked elbow. You can play around with hand a little bit in front of the shoulder versus hand in line with the shoulder. Really just depends on you guys. Our job is to show you the movements, to teach you how to do the movements. Your job is to feel those movements in the right places. And that means that some of you are gonna look a little bit different when you're doing those exercises. Feel difference? Wow. Yeah, I can see a difference. If um if you notice anytime that you notice that you have a large strength difference between one side to the other side, uh, a large strength difference would be like let's say you're doing the side delt raise and you can get 10 on the right side with five pounds, but you only get five on the left side with five pounds. That's a large strength deficit. Like 10 and nine, that's not that big of a deal. Um, so anytime that you notice that you have a really large strength different, uh, deficit or you're doing the exercise and you're like, holy shit, this is super easy on my right side, but really hard on my left side, do an extra set of that weak side. So basically you would go through the movement and then just do some extra reps, maybe with a lighter weight on that weaker side or rest a couple seconds and then just, you know, do it again. Uh, you don't have to do that a lot. You would really only do that like once or twice per workout. So if I'm doing bicep curls and I notice my left arm feels substantially weaker than my right arm, I would do one extra set of bicep curls in the entire workout just for my left arm. When you guys are doing those face pulls, I want you to think about driving elbows back behind you. This is where you're, you're being creeped on at the bar, just trying to get into your bar spot. For those of you that go, wait, we, we do go to the bar. It's not around here. For those of you that forget, what it's like to go to the bar. You all need to get your asses outside. What's that? 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going 13 minutes, gang. We are nine minutes down. Four minutes to go. How's that feel? Anything? Huh? Like here? No. Oh, like pulp. Yeah. Uh, turn your. No, no, not out. Uh, actually, yeah. Go ahead, go out. Huh? Yeah, I would. I would say, probably turn more toes, more toes out, and see how that feels. Yeah, again, you should. Um, you know, generally speaking, females have a lot more. Uh, joint play have a lot more mobility than males. Uh, this is definitely one of the, the RDL ISO hold is definitely one of those exercises where we want you feeling it in the hamstrings. Okay, the secondary place that we would want you to feel it would be your, your um, mid upper back because you're holding that weight. The third place you'd want you to feel it is your butt. Those would be the three primary areas for that muscle or for that exercise to be working. Hamstrings primarily. Secondary would be upper back, mid back, lats. This is, this is a great lat exercise if you can really groove the RDL for a, a good. And then third would be glutes. You should not feel this in your lower back. You should not feel this in the beginning of the hamstring in that gluteal fold should not necessarily feel this in the pelvic floor, should not necessarily feel this in your groin. You got about two minutes. Oh, you feel that? You feel that? <laughs> Medial delts, gang, side delts. Very important for happy, healthy shoulders. Very important. In a t-shirt. We're going 13 minutes, gang. We got one minute. One minute, my little fitness freaks. And we're going on to the second movement. Yeah. Nothing through here? No. Back here? Oh, yeah. No. Jess, give me more. Keep going. Yes. So I want you to imagine that somebody's pinching your elbows and you're pulling back like that. Yes. Gang, the face pulls. Ideally, face pulls would start from your shoulder blades meaning you're squeezing your shoulder blades back together, okay? That's not necessarily required in this particular exercise. So then I want you to imagine that somebody's grabbing a hold of your elbow tips, which incidentally you have no nerve endings on, and you're then they're pulling your elbows back behind you. Gang, that is time. Finish whatever it is that you are doing. Grab some water. You might not feel like you need to drink that much water in the winter, but in New England, you gotta drink the same amount of water as you do in the winter, as you do in the summer, because cold, dry air will leach that water out of you. Just like hot, humid air will leach the water out of you. 
So we got one more set or uh, one more series, and then we are going to do a finisher today. So next exercise, we got heels elevated, goblet squats. You guys can do this on anything, anything that elevates your heels roughly half to two inches, half inch, two inches. Okay. Um, closer your feet are together, the harder it is. Generally speaking, feet are going to stay somewhat close together. So maybe about like hip width apart, maybe shoulder width apart. The goal for this is to elevate your heels enough so that you can squat all the way down, still trying to keep chest up. I would actually, for today, I, me personally, I would squat a little bit higher to be able to do that. Um, goblet position just means that you're holding a weight at chest level. You should be able to do 20 of those heel elevated goblet squats, keeping your chest up before you add any weight, okay? So 20 body weight before you add any weight. That's the first exercise. Second exercise, three position bicep curls. You can use dumbbells, you can use bands. The three positions are uh, supinated. Uh, easy way to remember supinated is, do you want some soup? I can't give you soup if I balance the cup on the back of my hand. So supinated. Okay, hammer curl, so neutral grip, so like this. And pronated palms down. Um, as it's written, it's 10 reps of each. What I'm really looking for is I'm looking for a burn. So I'm looking for a burn in each one of those three positions. Um, and then third exercise is single leg hip ups. This is on the ground, right, Jamie? On the back, single leg hip ups, just regular. So single leg hip ups, just, just regular um, single leg hip ups. So just leg up off the ground, driving the hips up. If you guys wanna make this harder, you can elevate your foot on, a, on a, a chair or a step, okay? So you do the same single leg hip ups, just foot elevated. Um, we're gonna go eight minutes. 20 heel elevated goblet squats, burn or 10 each bicep curls. And 10 to 20 single leg hip ups. When you guys are doing those single leg hip ups, don't be afraid to put a pause in at the top. So you can really focus on squeezing that, that butt muscle. Uh, if you don't have anything to elevate your heels, you can also just keep your heels off the ground. These are called Hindu squats. I don't know why they're called Hindu squats. Stupid name, but whatever. Looks like this. Okay, so you can also just do Hindu squats. Um, eight minutes, three, two, one, go. So first exercise, 20. Working on trying to get hips below, hips below knees. Yeah, I think that's useless. Getting a two by four, two by four. It's a great tool for you guys to have at home. So lots of things that we can do with a two by four. And right now I think prices are down. So it's only like a hundred bucks per foot. <laughs> that was a little carpentry joke, which I don't know shit about. So don't hold that against me. We're going eight minutes, gang. When you're doing these goblet squats, this is a great opportunity. If you're doing this body weight, it's a great opportunity for you to focus on the muscles, not feel it through the joint, focus on the quads working, focus on the glutes working, focus on the hamstrings working. I like to do the three position hams or the three position bicep curls with a band. I just personally, for me, I just feel a little bit better. Uh, I'd probably go with, if you're going to do dumbbells, I'd probably go with like 15 to 25 pounds. Um, I'm going to give you a band. No, you're going to use, Emily, I'm going to give you a band though. Um, actually, use this one. That'll work, yeah. Two. Uh, you can uh, you can do this one dumbbell if you want to. 
see here. One, uh, third one is single active votes. Remember again, you got three positions for your curls, palms up, palms down, hammer curl, the order of course does matter, but in the grand scheme of things, as far as you're concerned, it does not matter. We're going for a burn. A burn, 10 reps. Um, you should be able to get at least 10 reps, okay? At least 10 reps. I do not want you to get less than 10 reps. That is too much stress through the um, tendon. So you should be able to get a burn around 10 to 25 reps. Then you're gonna go into your single leg hip ups. You got 10, 10 to 20 single leg hip ups. Which way? Supinated? You're weak. Like I can't lift. Yeah, you're weak. So you can use, actually, you would not want to use English for that. Uh, I would say go to a band. So Jess, what that says to you is you should throw in some, and when we do our self-love, you should throw in some supinated curls. Okay. okay. Uh, generally speaking, yeah, generally speaking, Hammer curl is the easiest. Supinator would be the second easiest and reverse would be the hardest. So you're doing reverse. So then just throw in some more, just throw in some more. I maybe start with those supinated curls first. Yeah, um, but I would also put some supinated curls into your self-love. Uh, after your um, after your curls, you're going to do hip ups, single leg hip ups. If you get to twenty single leg hip ups and your butt isn't on fire, then work harder. I'm just kidding. I mean, I'm not. I do want you to work harder, but you can elevate your foot onto um, a bench, a box. And remember, gang, any time that you can focus on using the muscle that you're supposed to be using. So for your single leg hip ups, for instance, you're focusing on that glute, like literally concentrating on the muscle doing the motion. You will typically always feel that muscle contracting to a much greater degree than if you just are focusing on trying to do the single leg hip up. Same thing with the bicep curls. If you focus on your biceps, you're gonna feel the bicep curl more in your biceps than you will if you just focus on trying to bend your elbows. After your single leg hip ups are done, we're gonna go back to your uh, heel elevated a uh, goblet squat or heel elevated squat. We're going eight minutes. We are six minutes down. Ninety seconds, gang. Ninety seconds. Eight minutes to go, finisher. If 
you guys want to feel those curls a little bit more, it's kind of a weird motion, but as you're bringing the hand towards your shoulder, I want you to imagine like you're trying to squeeze two fingers between your forearm and your bicep. So you're trying to squeeze that as hard as you can. Um, if you've never done that before, just take that a little bit easy because you're going to feel that really intense in the bicep. You can do that in a regular curl. You can do that in a hammer curl. You can do that in a reverse curl. You're just thinking about squeezing these two points together. It's really going to light your bicep up. <laughs> Paulina, <laughs> I told you, you got to take it easy. You can't do that. Like you got to work into that. 15 seconds. Ten seconds, gang. Rest. Let's grab some water. Grab some juice. We got to finish it today. For our finisher today, <laughs> not biceps. Um, we're gonna do <laughs> bicep curls. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, you will need a orange band. So you'll need a thin orange band. Okay, gang, so <clears throat> there's going to be four exercises. First exercise is gonna be a pull apart. So we're just gonna grab a whole band. We're gonna hold the band approximately nipple level, solar plexus level, and then we're pulling the shoulder blades back together to bring the, brain, the band to our chest. I'm not necessarily interested in bringing the band to the chest. Okay, I'm more interested in pulling the shoulder blades back together. That's the first exercise. Second exercise is going to be um, just an inchworm or a hand walk out, however you guys wanna do it. So just touch the toes. You're gonna to walk the hands away. You can walk as far away as you want and then walk the hands back to the toes, touch, and then drive that back out. Uh, we're just gonna start with those two exercises and I'll tell you the, um, the next one after those two. So uh, we're going to do 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. We're going to start with pull aparts. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Working on squeezing the shoulder blades back together. That's the most important thing I want you focusing on is squeezing shoulder blades back together. Band's going to go approximately, uh, for me, it would be basically barbell level. So nipple line, solar plexus, Kind of top third of the chest, rest. We're gonna go into our hand walkouts next. Go. So just walking the hands away and then walking the hands back to the feet. Rest. Okay, guys, we're gonna go back to that pull part. So third exercise, back to the pull parts. Go, 20 seconds, back to the pull parts. Pulling the shoulder blades back together. Should be feeling this mid back, or, um, between the shoulder blades mid back, maybe even a little bit lower. Rest, single leg hops. Reach down, touch the ground, little baby hop. Reach down, touch the ground, little baby hop. Make sure you bend your knee as much as you can to touch the ground, three, two, one, go. Stay on one side. We're gonna do the opposite side next round. Bend that knee as much as you can to be able to touch the ground. So like a little uh, baby squat. 
Touch the ground both hands. That's going to keep you a little more balanced. Rest. Switch sides. Go. Good, guys. Good. Rest, mountain climbers, mountain climbers. Just in a push-up position, driving knees to chest. Three, two, one, go. Good job, gang, good job. Rest, pull parts, last set of pull parts. Go, last set of pull parts. Rest, last one, mountain climbers or donkey kicks. Donkey kicks look like this. If you're gonna do donkey kicks, you gotta be able to land soft. Or mountain climbers. Three, two, one, go. So donkey kicks or mountain climbers. Donkey kicks are basically just kind of like pushing your hips up into the air, squeezing your heels to your butt, land soft. Or mountain climbers. It's much harder, much harder. 10 seconds, much harder than it looks. Good job, Jess. Two, rest. You guys are done. Good job. Well, I think it's good to be back. <laughs> yeah, welcome back. Thank you. you bye, everybody. Up. See you Friday. See you. See you. Bye, bye. See you, Suzanne. Bye. Bye, Suzanne. See you guys have a great day. Have a good one. Thank you. You're welcome.